All right. And with that, I'd like to introduce our presenters for today. We'll first be hearing from Mr. Jeremy Knudsen, the Technology Workflow Practice Lead at ServiceNow, who regularly advises customers on strategic portfolio and business management solutions, who will today be covering some of the latest innovations surrounding AI at ServiceNow and how best to adapt to industry trends. After that, we'll have the privilege of hearing from Results Positive founder and solutions architect, Mr. John Ferner, more than 20 year veteran of the IT service industry. We'll be further reviewing some of the latest ServiceNow SPM advancements in creating and communicating your AI strategy, driving innovation across teams, and effectively monitoring your new AI initiatives. And with that, we'll go ahead and turn the time over to Jeremy. Uh, thank you, Sean, and thank you, John, for allowing uh, Hayden and myself to, to be a part of this webinar, something that is obviously near and dear to what we see from our customers and also uh, folks in the industry and in the market space is, you know, the, the advent of artificial intelligence or generative AI and, and really the, the strategy around planning and delivering and having a strategy around when and where AI is going to be applicable to your organization, your business, your agency, your department, so on and so forth. So within the ServiceNow platform as well, you may or may not be familiar, the strategic portfolio management aspect of ServiceNow allows for vision, strategy, planning, resource allocation, uh, Gantt traditional PMI and PMBOK approaches, as well as agile approaches. And all of those are really requisite for the activities that will be leveraged when you're planning for some level of an AI strategy within your organization or supporting that AI strategy for any development moving forward. A lot of these are just simply metrics that we not only hear from Gartner Peer Review or the Forrester Total Economic Impact Reports that are out there, <clears throat> but the ability to have that decision-making process and strategize and plan for it is really critical. And I know John will be walking through some of that here with us today. A lot of the times the ability to deliver, and, and it's not just necessarily around AI, the, the delivery alignment and strategy alignment uh, go hand in hand prioritizing what work needs to be done, the impact of the work being done, including those teams that may be siloed today and bringing that, you know, that full purview and picture of uh, full transparency to that, as well as really the multitude and proliferated AI solutions that are out there. Data, data trust is also going to be really critical, but also the decisions around that data. So as we start to look at the surveys that happen across the ecosystem, we also see where they know that there's the application of AI inside of the organization and how do you actually plan for that correctly. And often what we do see in this whole grand scheme of things is the entire ecosystem, the benefits that are coming, the strategic roadmap that has been aligned, the intake and demand, which is often that initial request, the planning and tracking of all of the work that is being done, and then the existing processes in the, in, on the right side of this equation, which are incident change, problem, all of the other operational ecosystems, again, on one single platform. But we typically will see a lot of those siloed areas, as I had mentioned on the previous slide, and we're using AI as the construct of this planning piece here as well, which John will walk through, is that often these tools are, or tool sets are siloed. So these decisions are often made in different areas. AI strategy becomes really critical because there might be some integration points. There might be some other teams that are also working in the same vein. But if these tools and siloed solutions are sitting outside of a common platform, it really starts to begin a, a challenging piece from an operational perspective. So planning for a uh, proper, how you're going to deliver and execute on an AI strategy is really critical for most organizations as we're having those conversations. Now, the value of AI and that strategy really is, who is it impacting? It's impacting our uh, students, constituents, customers, uh, internal and external, but also having that end-to-end -end visibility and insight to that. Uh, traditional IT for IT constructs here or traditional Gartner constructs here. Strategy, plan, build, run, service, plan, build, deliver, operate. So in the world of defining that AI strategy on the left-hand side, you're going to have funding, you're going to have roadmaps, you're going to be looking at goals and targets to hit from that strategy perspective, 
all the while taking on all of the new requests or demands, so to say, into a central repository, a single front door, or even new ideas uh, that come in through that single front door to look at those and align that AI strategy or any strategy for that matter to continuous planning and change and, and prioritization. So aligning the new intake process to the goals and outcomes and the roadmap that a pot potentially an AI initiative would have becomes ever so critical because as we're aligning the work, the resource, the capacity, the time, start and finish of when it will be executed on, then begets that coordination of the delivery of that. And the delivery can happen from a, a traditional uh, waterfall approach, or it could happen in a hybrid approach, which is bringing in epics, stories, cases, defects. All of those in the while could still be leveraging some integrations that are optional as well. Uh, particularly in the AI area, we've seen that Azure DevOps or a CI CD pipeline or any bi-directional existing work being done in a JIRA environment still can be folded in to the ecosystem of the strategic portfolio management aspect of ServiceNow. Agile can be done, scaled agile can be done, and all of those more the while in the mix of an AI strategy where waterfall, hybrid, and all of those aspects still touch that, that core tenant of requests coming in, incident change, and problem. So what we're walking through here is how all of that previous sticky note slide I had shared previously works together on a single platform using something like an AI strategy to have that definition of potentially how are we planning to deliver and execute in particular areas <clears throat> our AI approach? Now, more so, and I'll go ahead and just wrap up with this before I hand over to you, John, but some of the building blocks of that AI strategy that we often see is having the vision, right? So the left side of that uh, equation I was just showcasing is the vision of what you're doing, prioritizing the innovation of where, the, again, generative AI is going to be valuable for your organization aligned to your strategic outcomes, goals, and priorities. You saw in that execution area, the delivery, the how do, how, what are the methods for which we are delivering it? How does that also play into an enterprise architectural vision and strategy to avoid or, or, or avoid future tech debt? And then obviously, you're always at the very tail end of this, looking at a value optimization perspective. You're continuously evaluating impact and outcomes expected by the strategy to deploy and deliver an AI construct. I know I ran through that rather quick for you there, John, but I wanted to give a, a building block as to and, and tee you up for uh, the next steps of what you'd be sharing and showcasing with the team that we have on the line with us here today. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Really honored to have you uh, join us today and share your experience and wisdom here uh, as you working and advising uh, customers around their AI strategy and how they can use the uh, ServiceNow uh, technology and, and capabilities to make that a reality. So really do appreciate it. Um, I will uh, now jump in and uh, start uh, focusing on some more details here. Um, and how you can actually create that AI strategy, show you how you can do that in the system, and then focus on how you can actually then communicate that out to the organization. Uh, one thing we found when it comes to AI strategy is just uh, vital to make sure that uh, the strategy is set and you have a plan, but at the same time that you're able to communicate that plan out uh, to the organization. And so that's uh, vital. For those of you that have joined today and, and you're not familiar with Results Positive, I just want to let you know that we really uh, specialize in strategic portfolio management uh, as well as analytics. And we've been doing that for the last 20 years and really honored with our partnership here with uh, ServiceNow. So as uh, Jeremy was mentioning, it's really important to come up with that strategic plan and be able to communicate that so we have guidance for the organization because AI can become uh, this area where just things are kind of uh, not controlled in the organization. You might get some unintended consequences uh, without having a good strategic plan that's communicated to the organization. So to kind of break it down uh, here uh, at a high level, and then I'll go into the system here and provide uh, a demonstration. So 
First of all, what you can easily do here is you can actually go in and create a strategic plan. So you can document what's the purpose, what are we trying to accomplish with AI in our organization? What's the mission and vision? It uh, kind of gets the structure uh, for uh, whether it be the PMO organizations or whether it be the different departments and department heads or agency heads, um, really to get everyone kind of aligned to uh, a common AI strategy. Uh, and then uh, really focus on those priorities and goals. So once you've defined the AI uh, strategic plan, then you want to identify your priorities. And this kind of gives that structure that I was just mentioning to make sure that all of our investments and all of our time are aligned to those uh, priorities. And so those priorities could be, yes, we want to do AI, but we want to do it very securely in a very risk controlled fashion. It also could be that we're really trying to look for a competitive advantage for AI, and so that may be part of our strategic priorities as well. And so once we have a chance to do that, then we can break those down into uh, goals. We can take each one of those priorities, and we can break those down into goals or OKRs. So depending upon the framework that you use to manage goals, you can either do uh, the objectives and key results, or you can uh, manage it as goals and targets here within ServiceNow. And so what's really good there is once you break it down at that level, then you can start tracking the progress against those goals and those targets or those uh, key results. And that way you can continually report back how well are we doing at executing our AI a strategy for the organization. And then as uh, Jeremy mentioned, right, we want to then kind of be able to ongoingly manage and maintain that overall strategy. And how we typically do that is, first of all, we would want to communicate that plan to all of our stakeholders. And one thing that you might do is initiate a process by which employees can submit their ideas and use cases for AI. Every uh, department in the organization or every agency might have different opportunities for AI in their different industries. And so it would be a great opportunity for them to submit those use cases, and that way they can be governed as part of this uh, centralized AI uh, practice. And then they can start selecting those ideas that they feel are worth uh, the investment for the organization, uh, and then initiate the process to create a demand for having that business case analysis. Then at that point, they would start building uh, those uh, demand cases. Uh, and the associated uh, cost benefit related to those. Then they can look at start scoring and prioritizing those items. And then at that point, uh, they need to make sure that they're aligned to your strategic plan, i.e. aligned to your strategic priorities and your primary goals. So at that point, then you can place them on your strategic roadmap. And at that point, you can start understanding with that roadmap, do we have dependencies? Do we have the right sequencing of those various initiatives that we prioritized and approved? And so it's a great way to communicate uh, those dependencies and make sure that uh, we actually can execute on the roadmap. And one of the key things here to be able to do that is to see if we have enough resource capacity. And so that's a key uh, function here with strategic planning uh, with ServiceNow. Not only can I uh, prioritize and identify and create uh, my roadmap, but then I can also confirm that we have the capacity to do that. Um, and so that's part of here with the ongoing analysis, operationalization, and maintaining of our roadmap. So make sure that we've always got that capacity. Here again, that capacity could be internal resources, could be external resources, and to continue to manage and, and monitor the dependencies. And then ultimately, we want to manage uh, the achievement of our goals, right? We're doing AI for a business benefit. Um, and so uh, we want to make sure that we're able to report back to the stakeholders that here was our plan, here were our goals, here's how we've been able to uh, achieve those goals. Next, just to kind of highlight here, as you're going through the, the scoring and prioritization of those proposed demands, there's various frameworks uh, out of the box. So there's the RICE a scoring framework where you can look across what's the reach uh, that this uh, opportunity or solution will have, what's the impact to the organization, what's the confidence that uh, this will be implemented uh, as uh, defined, and what would be the effort. And we all know with AI, right, some of it's rather new, some of it is maturing, and so we would have different scores there which help us determine what's the right initiative to invest in. But you could use a different framework uh, if you're doing agile, the weighted shortest job first. You could look at the uh, effort versus value, 
or you can create your own uh, scoring framework. Once you've done that, that really gives you an overall input to your overall prioritization. And so you could look at those scores, you could look at your Moscow analysis, you can obviously want to confirm alignment to your strategic plan and your overall uh, goals and objectives. And then ultimately then you would prioritize and rank your items and then you would just set up your plan, i.e. your roadmap. And so that's just uh, a key capability here that you'll be able to do. Also with the new release, you can actually start doing some scenario planning at a high level. And so you can start doing some scenario planning if we select these five uh, initiatives versus others, uh, what would be the uh, alignment to our goals and objectives. One thing we also kind of highlighted that's really important, whether it be for your AI strategy or whether it just be for your overall project investments in general, is making sure you have a governance structure in place. We've seen multiple organizations where they actually create a separate uh, strategic steering committee for AI because they know it touches across the organization. They know that it's a, a very uh, you know, popular uh, initiative, but also it's very important from a risk perspective to make sure we manage the risk because we have many stakeholders, right? We need to protect the employees. We need to in, in protect the agencies. We need to protect the constituents and our external customers. Uh, and we just need to protect uh, the IP uh, and the internal uh, data that we have to enable uh, AI. And so we typically see that you want to have a, a various governance structure in place, both to kind of set the uh, direction, i.e. via creating the strategic plans, but then also reviewing and governing the actual investments. <clears throat> Excuse me. And John, I think <clears throat> as well, sorry, I'll clear my throat with you, bud. One of the things that's interesting, get back to what you, you, know, you and I have seen over the time, is that a lot of the governance and the process outside of the tooling itself is really what's critical about the definition of the AI strategy. But all of this work, again, happening on one single lens, one single purview, the demands coming in, the work that's being executed, that full end-to-end -end visibility that's aligned to strategy is really key. Is that a fair statement, John? Yeah, that's critical, right? Uh, especially when we're governing, right? We need to govern against what our goals and objectives are uh, versus just what uh, a leader is uh, espousing for their group, right? So yes, we need to have that strategic direction. We need to have that overall alignment. Uh, so that we can actually achieve the desired outcomes. Yeah, very, very good uh, point there. Um, so, and also he added another really good point there that, um, yes, you can have the right technology and ServiceNow can provide you with the technology that you need to help you with your strategic planning, which we're going to go into next and show you the demo, but you need to have the governance, you need to have the process, you need to have the organizational change around that to make sure that you're going to actually uh, achieve your end results. Because you could go out there and uh, have the information here, but if you're not sharing it with the organization, if they're not involved in the overall process, uh, then uh, your overall outcomes will be diminished. And so I'm going to start here in the system, and I'm going to start here into a uh, particular uh, strategic plan that I've created for uh, AI. So one thing just to highlight here in ServiceNow in the strategic planning workspace, yes, you can create a strategic plan for the organization. You could create a strategic plan for the agency or for a department or for uh, an overall portfolio. But in today's uh, webinar, we're focusing in on your strategic plan. And so what we have here is we have the AI strategic plan uh, being referenced here. So we can see that we have an overall AI strategic plan and we can see here we've established various uh, priorities. So we want to build an AI foundation for long term. And then we have our associated goals uh, with that. And then here we can see the current initiatives uh, that are being proposed or uh, already accepted. Same thing here, we were trying to look at creating a strategic advantage through AI. And so we've got goals here around efficiency uh, use cases, competitive advantage use cases here, creating our selection and governance frameworks in place so that we can manage and govern uh, our AI investments as well as our solutions. And we've got very important here, managing our AI risks. Do we have a risk management plan here? Uh, do we have a responsible approach? Do we have policies and guidelines here for everyone to follow? when it comes to dealing with AI and AI data, as well as uh, AI uh, solutions, as well as 
we probably need to update our company IP and copyright uh, policies and procedures. And then down here, the organization's gonna have to change. As Jeremy's mentioning, the importance of uh, the overall process in the organization. So is the organization ready for AI? Um, you might need to look at uh, educating uh, the organization, but also educating uh, some areas of expertise around AI moving forward. So here you can kind of create that plan and you can see that uh, visibility here uh, within the strategic planning workspace. I can also then look at my roadmap uh, here, and these are already my prioritized items. And so what's nice here is you can kind of filter and color code everything here based upon uh, specific criteria that you'd like. In this case, I've chose each primary goal, and I can see the specific initiative that relates to those goals, and I can see our overall timeline associated with that. In this scenario here, I don't have the capacity uh, set up here related to this, but you can set up the capacity and I'll show that in another uh, portfolio plan. But you can see that we have the capacity to actually execute uh, this roadmap. So that's how you kind of see the overall view here. And I like the view John, here from a power quick Really quick, if, if you don't yes. mind, I think just, I, I, I love uh, to tie a lot of this stuff together because if you were to think of, yeah, you're about to expand that out. You probably know where I'm going already. A lot of the rice, the Moscow, a lot of some of those industry standard components att attached to the primary goal. What's really interesting for me about seeing how the solution stitches it all together is that you see you have a smattering of demand and project all in one view. So you that intake, that single front door that I started with, right? You actually see all of the things being asked, but all of the things being executed and scored and ranked in one central spot. Fair statement, John? Yeah, yeah, you're a great lead in there. That's what I wanted to highlight next. Uh, so like to the slide I was showing earlier, right, we can score things. We can then uh, look at the other inputs into the prioritization, such as the Moscow rating here. Um, we can make sure it's aligned to our goals. So just as an example here, uh, we can come over here and do scoring of these various initiatives. We've already scored a couple of those here, but we look at, say, data governance as an example. Well, this is something that would in impact the whole organization. We'll keep it simple and say we have 500 people. And here we can say it's definitely going to impact everyone. The confidence level that we would have for implementing this would be, uh, I'll, say, I'll say, very as high. And then here, the level of effort, maybe that's medium effort. We can see here it's going to then generate an overall RICE score as one of those factors here into our overall prioritization. So you'd be able to kind of go in here and go through that process here of scoring uh, your various uh, planned initiatives. I can come back over here into planning. I can see the result of that scoring information here. I can see those overall scores. If I wanted to, right, I could uh, filter here uh, and uh, really just sort by those scores. So I can use that in my prioritization process. You'll see here, I've already pre-prioritized a couple of these. And really what occurs here once I'm prioritizing, I'm saying, yes, we want to move forward with this one. It's important to put it on our roadmap. And it's important for us to start uh, looking at executing uh, this particular item. So only the items listed here that are prioritized would show up over here in the roadmap uh, that we were showing before. So we can view things from that perspective. What's also really nice here is when you're looking at this and you wanted to uh, actually uh, kind of slice and dice the, the data uh, in here. Uh, so you can definitely do that. So say if we wanted to look at the primary goal here, and so we can then see all the grouping here uh, by primary, primary goal. What if we also wanted to look at it from the, the Moscow uh, type rating? So we can see here uh, within this, right? Uh, we can kind of see this view. Here's by goal. Here's the, the Moscow rating. We could obviously put in our overall score here. So it gives you a way to slice and dice the information as you're making those prioritization decisions. And we can come over here and say, yeah, we want to move forward with looking at some of our third-party AR partners, and we can prioritize that. That item now is going to uh, show up here in the roadmap, and we'll, we can see it showing up here. And so then we can start managing this overall roadmap. So that's a great uh, focus here of the scoring and prioritization so we can identify the right items to actually uh, work on. 
So that kind of gives you a view here of an overall uh, strategic plan. Now what I want to go back to is just kind of the, the building blocks here in creating your overall strategic plan. But before I do that, Jeremy, I'll kind of put you on the spot here. Anything else you'd like to highlight here uh, while I'm here in the strategic planning workspace? I'm going to come back to it, but just thought there might be something you might want to add. No, well, John, I think, you know, thank you for that. You know, I'm always happy to add and Hayden's quite familiar with me jumping in. <clears throat> Obviously, my my passion for seeing all of this in, in a, sing, a single lens and purview, especially solving for strategic initiatives. You know, I love that we're talking about an AI strategic plan here, but it really kind of pervases any goal, any framework, any initiative that you may have, um, but also those industry standard scoring mechanisms and Quite honestly, the technology is is there. It's the governance and process, John, that also you're highlighting with such great data that you've actually got built around this specific initiative. So I'm impressed, John. I, uh, I've seen a lot of AI demos, but um, th this one is actually really cool <laughs> how to plan for it, John. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. So let's kind of start with the building blocks here. Uh, and I included that in the presentation. So Basically, right, you can come in here and you can create a strategic plan. You can see here I've got multiple strategic plans that are set up and I can have my associated goals with that. Here is the Gen AI, I, Gen AI strategic plan that we were just looking at. Just here, right, I could come over here and say new and create a new uh, overall strategic plan. And so here I can just say that you put in your name here. You can put the, the date range that you this plan is for. Is it going to be for a year? Is it going to be two year type plan? kind of a description is kind of the purpose, the mission and vision here of your overall plan. And that's all you need to do to actually create your plan. So let's go look at the uh, Gen AI strategic plan that I created previously. And we can see in here, we've got the name, we've got the uh, the date it's here. So it's uh, basically a, a two year plan. Here again, you can always come back in and update that. We have a description here, provide the strategic direction and guidance to the organization to continue to pursue and implement technology innovations. We have our vision here, keep pace with technology innovations, and we want to achieve positive outcomes. So that's kind of the core there. Then we'll see up here on top, we have values. So we talk about how important it is to have process and collaboration, participation of the organization. So you get to define what are the core values that are going to be needed across the organization, uh, just with the people component, as well as with the process component. And so in this case, we've got creative, teamwork, transparency is really going to be vital, right, to be very successful uh, with a uh, AI strategic plan. And John, then here go you go back can... to that really quick. I'm so sorry. Yes. Um, yeah. it, 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 um, yeah. I often like to point out the subtle nuances as well of the platform to, to showcase the, the viability or the usability of it. On the right side, you see attachments. You see that it says I can select an attachment. Seems simple. But if it's creative and it was a conference room whiteboarding session and someone grabbed their iPhone or their Android and took a picture of, of what they were trying to do, the diagram, and you wanted to attach that to this and put it in there as a archival of collaboration, you can do that. That's what that no attachments available. Well, you know, that we don't have one. But when you're when you're generating that plan, that business case and some of the things that might have happened on the back of the napkin. That's a beautiful place on the right hand side to use that fair statement, John. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So you are going to have those storming sessions, right, to create your strategic plan. So perfect example there, Jeremy, how you can tie that all together and and use that as a reference as they're uh, continuing to build out their plan. And so probably part of those uh, storming sessions, right, you would have described and identified what are our priorities? What are we going to use to guide our uh, strategic plan and, and guide the implementation here? So in this example here, we've created uh, a few strategic priorities. We want to build an AI foundation for long term. Um, so not just focus on short term, but we want to make sure it's there for long term. We want to create a strategic advantage. We need to enhance and transform the workforce. We talk about process, we talk about people. So we know that's a big component there and we need to manage our risks, right? So what we can do is we can come in here and we can look at one of our strategic plans and if each one of those uh, strategic priorities, I should say. So we've got those uh, strategic priorities here. We can also put a date timeline associated with our strategic priorities. We can also then identify our goals. 
we talked about. So we can set goals to actually achieve. How do we want to achieve building an AI foundation? Well, we need to create a, an internal company LLM for AI. So that's going to be a long term. But probably in the short term, we need to build some uh, AI partnerships with technology providers. Uh, we need to establish an AI research and development practice. And we need to probably fine tune and tailor some available uh, public models here in the short term. So those would be some of our goals that we would uh, focus on as part of the strategic priority of building an AI foundation. And so then within those, right, we can, uh, as part of our goals, and we can identify, and this is kind of core product capabilities here, you know, who's going to own that goal, right? That's really vitally important, right? So who's going to own that? Um, also, then we can set up these targets or key results if you want to set up in terms of uh, objectives and key results. And so here we can say a simple target here is establish AI uh, R&D group. So that's uh, kind of a, a straightforward one. If we had specific metrics here, right, if we wanted to highlight, um, you know, the number of team members or uh, other types of actual tangible metrics, we can do that as well. And those would be other uh, targets that we would set up. So we can, we can kind of go through that process here to create those priorities and create those goals. And then the end result here is what we were showing here into the uh, actual uh, portfolio plan is we had established those priorities. Uh, see if we come back here, let's go back here to the hierarchy. So this is where we established our plan. We established these uh, four priorities here. Right? So we have those four priorities. We can then look at the individual goals, and then we can see the individual initiatives. So it really helps communicate to the organization, um, and uh, it's a great way to make sure that we're all focused on achieving the outcomes that have been desired for uh, Gen AI as a strategy for our organization. And, now, a key and thing John, to... John, when we think about Gen AI often being modern, we think of it from a, an agile approach, right? We, we know that internally as well here right. at ServiceNow, that it, it, it typically lends to that hybrid work, large, large initiatives, large goals, large projects. Yep. But what I think is unique about this as well, and I'm, you know, the peanut gallery for you, John, but if you were to go and just click on the Kanban side of this, what I think is really interesting from an organizational and an adoption perspective is that you prioritize and your swim lanes. So if folks like to work in more of that same list view, that Kanban methodology, <clears throat> this is where blending that world of that Gantt and that um, agile world come together. And the reason I mention this, John, how many times have we probably seen in customers' conference rooms, they don't say that they do agile, but that planning, that attachment I mentioned earlier is a bunch of sticky notes in swim lanes on a conference room wall. Fair statement, John? Yeah, we, we see that all the time, right? So yeah, this is uh, digitizing that uh, post-it notes uh, on those whiteboards. So uh, very good point here. The other thing I'll just add to that too is when you were looking at the list here, I had kind of demands, project proposals, and projects, but you could have epics. You could have your uh, agile components here. Um, we won't have time to get into the execution, but you can manage the enterprise agile planning uh, to actually execute uh, your overall uh, strategy and, and your roadmap. So um, definitely, and that's one advantage we see in the platform is all in one platform, waterfall, hybrid, agile, enterprise agile. Um, so it gives you the different types of execution methods uh, for ease of use and as well as for adoption in the organization. Thanks for that. The other thing I was going to highlight, which I think is really important. So two things. When we talk about communication is really key, right? If we keep our strategy uh, under wraps and don't communicate it, right? We're probably not going to achieve the outcomes we're looking for. So one thing you could do, right? You could share uh, this overall portfolio plan for your IE strategic plan, and you could share that with all your stakeholders, right? It's probably not realistic to share with everyone, but you could share it with, say, your governance committees, right? That strategic uh, steering committee, uh, maybe a couple other layers of your governance committee. You could share this view with them, and they would all be able to see this, and they'd all be able to track and understand uh, the direction. But if you want to also then share it with others outside of the system, you can do that as well. And so you can actually click here, export uh, this roadmap here uh, to uh, PowerPoint. 
Um, and so that's also available for you in a, a great communication tool. So I, I did that here right before uh, the call. So here taking that overall um, portfolio plan and here within we can start to see our prioritized items here by rank. We can start uh, looking at uh, the different uh, initiatives here and it kind of gives us the initiative status associated with those. Um, and you also have in the new release, I don't think I had it set up here, but you can actually see the, the roadmap uh, chart here on uh, PowerPoint as well. So a great way to uh, communicate your overall strategy and, and roadmap uh, with the organization. If I'm just looking at time, uh, the next thing I wanted to share um, is one thing that we found very uh, important for success, uh, for adoption, for sustainability, for data accuracy, is giving that visibility. So we as Results Positive uh, have been adding additional uh, dashboards and portal capabilities that can be shared with anyone in the organization using the ServiceNow uh, capabilities. And it's actually uh, built here within uh, ServiceNow. Soon to be on the ServiceNow store is something that uh, we can definitely, uh, you can uh, purchase from us today. But here's an example of that strategic plan using uh, our strategic uh, plan portal. So in this case here, right, I selected the strategic AI plan. I could have selected one of my other plans and uh, so I can uh, bring that in and it will display all this information. So what's nice here is you get to select what logo you want. So you could have a different logo for every plan. And here is the information pulled from ServiceNow. And next here, we can see our mission vision. We can see the values we have for this particular strategic plan. We can also then see what are those strategic priorities? We've seen those uh, in the system. Now you kind of have that communication presentation type uh, of document that you can share with the organization. And then within each uh, strategic priority, we can see the goals that have been set up. We can see the targets, uh, what we're trying to accomplish uh, from a key result or uh, overall target perspective. Also, you get to set what color scheme you want. You get to identify what graphics you want to add in here. Um, so you get to be able to do that uh, just with a standard end user uh, access to the system. And here then we would see for this specific uh, strategic uh, priority, create strategic advantage, we can see those uh, demands or projects or epics, those initiatives here, strategic programs, and we can see then the status and the overall percent complete. So it's a great way to communicate your plan as well as your current progress. Same thing here, we could look at our other strategic priorities, look at our overall goals and uh, key results. Same thing here, we would see our overall uh, roadmap for enhancing and transforming the workforce, as we know that's critical for adoption of AI. So then next here, we wanna manage the AI risks. Uh, and so we can see our different goals here. We can see uh, the various uh, targets that we've set. Uh, here again, we can always add to and, and add more targets over time. And here then we would see the roadmap around managing AI risks, right? We need to publish our policies. We need to put together a risk uh, management plan as an example. Definitely would have other initiatives here, but you can see that uh, as an example. And then here, if we wanna build that AI foundation for long-term usage, that's one of our core uh, strategic priorities. So we wanna build those partnerships. We wanna build our own uh, LLM. We wanna establish an AI practice here. So. Uh, those are our current goals. And then we can look at our various initiatives here associated with that. So also you can do here, you can uh, then print this out or you can export this to PowerPoint. And so the PowerPoint would look just like the presentation mode you see here. And so you could take that and then uh, communicate out to the organization. So we have multiple uh, customers using this already. It's a great way they can get it out to the executives as well as as an opportunity to communicate to the organization. What we found is many organizations are creating a strategic plan and they're creating it in a PDF form, um, but it's really as a standoff, uh, you know, outside the system. This way you can create it in uh, ServiceNow, you can manage your overall uh, portfolio, your overall roadmap, as well as then you can communicate that out to the organization in a very nice executive type fashion. So that's kind of one of the things we wanted to highlight here in our webinar today. Uh, I'm going to go into a couple more slides, but before I do that, Jeremy, just see if there's anything you wanted to highlight. Uh, no, I think it's I think the uh, the level of visibility that you were showcasing just now that that you all have as well 
there, John, at Results Positive, I know it's really critical for not only stakeholders, but executives and uh, the executioners alike, right? So really, really powerful stuff. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we've, we've just really found that if there's one thing you do as part of organizational adoption uh, to be for ultimate success is really to uh, provide uh, visibility. And that's through uh, engaging impactful reporting. So we have the strategic plan portal as I just walked through here today. Some of you that might have attended some of our other uh, sessions, uh, we have our executive uh, portfolio portal. So we've seen organizations use this to track all their AI initiatives and report that out and share that out with the whole enterprise. Um, so just as an FYI. And then from there, they can quickly uh, view uh, a business case, uh, a project status report. What's amazing with this is you have a business case template that everyone sees the same look and feel across the organization. So executives love to drill in. Same thing with your status report. Same thing with the project charter. Um, and here's an example of the, uh, the status report. Uh, one thing that I just wanted to highlight very briefly, we don't have a lot of time, but ServiceNow has a great new solution uh, called Collaborative Work Management. And this is to help with some of your AI initiatives Think about the cross-agency, cross-department. How do you pull those organizations together? You're trying to do that R&D and trying to identify your use cases that we talked about earlier. This solution is something that's very easy to do. You can turn it on and you can just allow various team members to create their own uh, boards, if you will, uh, and create their own uh, tasks and their own uh, Gantt chart. And they can use that to just manage and, and brainstorm and uh, execute various activities. It can be operational activities or it could be tied to a larger project. And what's really powerful here too is the end user has full control. So you can create one of these. It can be fully uh, data separated from the rest of the platform. So only the uh, shared team would be able to, to view the information. Also, they have full control. They can actually uh, do some of their own, uh, if you will, um, configuration. They don't need an admin, so they can uh, create some of their own uh, fields or some of their own automations. Um, so that's also available here as well. So just wanted to highlight that. We don't have a lot of time, but it's a great way to help with uh, creating those use cases across uh, the organization. Just a couple of quick things here about best practices. That's one thing we specialize in here. So as we've highlighted today with AI, it's important to start off with a plan for SPM as well. From there, create an overall phased roadmap. That's what's really key is a phased roadmap. Um, and then from there, right, focus on the people, the process, the governance. Also focus on keeping it simple, keeping it out of the box. That's how you're going to drive ultimate results and adoption for the organization. Um, here's some of our critical success factors that we found over the last 20 years implementing uh, PPM solutions. Start with the strategy, start with the outcomes. Don't over-automate, keep it out of the box, follow the 80-20 rule. Number three here, as we've kind of been mentioning, focus on metrics, focus on reports. So if you're just implementing the intake process, let's have some reports and metrics on that so we can determine how we're going to improve our processes, our people engagement, as well as the technology over time versus just doing it based upon feedback. So. Here again, the key is around uh, that performance metrics as, as well as uh, visibility. And then at the bottom two here, are your standard uh, focus here on organizational change. So organizational change is key uh, about getting the people engaged uh, and getting them engaged in the processes. Hey, Jeremy, I'll put you on the spot. So what are some common questions you normally receive from customers? Oh, man, John, that's a, that's a loaded question. <laughs> Uh, where do I start? Sometimes it's the basics, right? I know uh, it's often where do we start? How do we begin uh, instead of overcomplicating things to begin with? Or can we unravel and connect multiple systems together? Uh, you know, you saw the sticky note piece that I had I'd started with initially. Um, often it's you're not pulling all of those off at once. You're you're figuring out where those are in, in the process as you go along. And I think you highlighted that quite well is that it's process and governance along the line, John, that that also we're familiar that you help a lot of our customers with, so. Great, thank you. Yeah, and one question we get with the strategic uh, planning is, can we create a strategic plan without impacting, say, uh, execution? 
preferred is you would uh, set it up so you would also do your execution. But if you have a strategic planning group and they're just focused on strategic planning, yeah, you could allow them to have access. They could create strategic plans and they can create their goals and then they could communicate that out. Um, and so they could kind of do that, quote unquote, in isolation. So uh, different ways of uh, setting up and using the strategic planning workspace. Typically, uh, organizations use it to manage their different portfolios or different departments uh, and the initiatives associated with that, as well as strategic initiatives like we've seen today uh, for AI. So those are some of the questions we receive on, you know, who can use it? Can we start having pilot groups start using it versus the whole organization? Definitely recommend uh, rolling it out across the organization in a phased fashion. Uh, so in terms of uh, questions on next steps, uh, typically what we see, there's many opportunities uh, that organizations are looking to take advantage of ServiceNow, whether it be the strategic planning that we've talked about, resource management, hybrid project portfolio management. Those seem to be the top three uh, focus areas today. Embedded within strategic planning is kind of that demand intake process. And we can see down below here are some things that we can help uh, organizations and we're helping organizations on a daily basis with some of the analytics and reporting that we've shown, the implementation and roadmap, uh, as well as just ongoing advisory and configuration support. So we do that uh, for organizations as well. So a couple of the current uh, next steps uh, that customers will engage after our webinars, they'll like to schedule a free SPM value discovery workshop. We can understand where you are in your journey. We can provide you with best practice recommendations, give you that advice so that you won't back yourself into a corner, that you'll be able to effectively implement the solution over time uh, for overall adoption. We can definitely obviously come in and schedule and show you some of our analytic solutions, how they augment uh, ServiceNow, have you give some additional visibility out to the entire organization as well as then we can uh, come in and highlight how we can help you with implementation or advisory services. So these are some of the common next steps that uh, customers reach out to. So you'll have an opportunity to follow up when Sean sends out the email uh, and the recording here of the webinar to follow up with us. Jeremy, anything you'd like to highlight in terms of a next step that you guys typically provide customers? Uh, John, I think typically on the next step side is uh, engaging as well with with great partners like yourself, um, understanding and, and reaching out to your your core account teams as well. If there was something of interest here that maybe you, I know you probably learned something today. Um, if if appropriate, yeah, please reach out to to us, uh, the constituency on on the line here today, or uh, your core account teams. We're always happy to to be here to provide assistance and support. Thank you, John and Sean, for allowing me to be, uh, like I said earlier, the peanut gallery on the phone today. So appreciate that very much. Yeah, thanks so much, Jeremy. Appreciate it. Appreciate your wisdom and guidance today. Thank you all. Take care. Thanks, everybody. everyone. Have a wonderful thanks for rest attending of the week. today.